Welcome back everybody. One major thing motivates me in life and that is getting off of the beaten path to explore as much as I can. And so I picked this Jeep Gladiator Rubicon to be able to push myself beyond any limits that I've ever encountered. And while I do believe that it is the best platform for my off-road adventures, I feel like it's missing a little something. It's just not set up for that perfect camping experience as is. And so over the next few videos, I'm gonna transform the bed of my Jeep Gladiator into an overland camping rig. And to start my camping build, today I'm gonna install the Hook Road Overland Camping Bed Rack. And while this bed rack is not necessarily the best or the most feature packed bed rack out there, I consider it one of the best budget options that you can find. And although it's not as blistering cold as it was last week, it is 18 degrees Fahrenheit. So I'm gonna move into the garage to start assembling the rack that way, as I get some of the major components assembled, I can walk them out and install them in the bed. And I did mention earlier that this is one of the best budget options out there. So I wanna point out that there was some minor damage to the packaging and when I unboxed it, I did have one component that had a small paint chip right here. So I'm assuming this is supposed to be powder coated with some kind of textured finish, but there is a little paint chip right there. I would use this primer. However, I did know it is 18 degrees Fahrenheit. It's really only about 30 inside of my garage here. So this primer requires at least a 50 degree Fahrenheit ambient temperature to set. So I'm gonna go ahead and install with that paint defect and that's also something I can monitor over the next few months and just see how good this thing holds up. So a quick tip before I do start the installs, I wanna measure the distance in between the rails on the bed. That way I know just about how much spacing I want in between the feet on the rack. And the reason that's important is the rack can fit all sorts of vehicles. It can fit Tacomas, Rangers, uh, canyons, Colorados, essentially any mid-sized truck. So my measurement end to end is just about 56 inches. And so that's what I'm gonna aim for when I assemble the rails here. On top of that, I do wanna measure how high the vehicle sits. That way I can tell if the added weight of approximately 126 pounds from this rack induces any sag in the suspension. I'll call that an even 40. I've got the feet about 55 inches apart. That'll give me some wiggle room in the bed. So I've got my first arch essentially assembled and now I'm gonna put these little foam feet and this will prevent me from scratching up my bed as I slide these things in. Yep, push it in. There you go, perfect. So I totally could have done this by myself, but if you got two sets of hands, you might as well put them to use. I figured this was easier than assembling the entire thing and then lifting it into the bed, which also minimizes the risk of scratching up my bed if I have to complete this job by myself. So we have the perfect amount of bolts, washers, and nuts. And that's okay, but I did have two blemished uh, bolts so I put those in a non-structural location, but it would have been better just to have non-blemished bolts to begin with. So here's my first blem. The blem has a little wedge cut out of the bolt shape, and then there's a blem on top there. So the one in the middle here is good to go with the two blems on the top and the bottom. If I do add any accessories here, I assume that the bolts for those accessory clamps will help uh, reinforce this location. But like I said, this is not a structural support area, so not something I'm too concerned with. My little buddy here helped me with all of the assembly with the two of us and me stopping to film occasionally. It still only took a little over an hour or so. One and a half to two hours max. I feel like anybody with a minimal amount of mechanic skills can put something like this together in one or two hours max. So we measured the fender height at just about 40 inches when we started and in all honesty, with the 126 pounds, it's still just about 40 inches. So I don't feel like the 100 pounds really did anything to depress the suspension, but let's throw some weight on it so we can at least see what it would look like if theoretically we had the 400 pounds of weight on it. I've got four 45 pound weights, which are 180 pounds. And then I've got two 90 pound weights on top of that, which is another 180 pounds. That brings me to 360 pounds. And then my son here weighs hundred pounds. So I'm at about 38 and a half inches. Theoretically, you would have a better distribution of load, but if you do load this thing down with 400 pounds, you're gonna get about an inch and a half of resting 
sag. Just keep that in mind. Overall though, there doesn't appear to be any flex with all these weights in my son on there. So let's get all these weights off and take this thing out and see how it handles out on the trail. We're gonna go hit the road. I've got a trail that I couldn't go down in my van recently. And what I wanna do is go take the Jeep down that trail, get some shots of this awesome rack that I've got on the back of the truck and talk a little bit more about the rack's features. So I am looking in the bed of the vehicle and I can see that the rack kind of vibrates at the same consistency as the bed. So it is definitely like one with the bed in the sense that it's not going anywhere that the bed is not going. And I do hear a little bit of a rattle. So when we get to the trail here in a minute, I'm gonna go and just double check every bolt. I should have done that probably before I left the house. But when it does vibrate, I do hear a little bit of a rattle. So I wanna see what that is. It's gotta either be a loose bolt or it's possible that the rack itself does rattle because there is no weight on it currently. Rushing a job always comes at a price and I'm about to pay for it. What we will soon find out is that I should have pulled over immediately and thoroughly checked everything. This hook road bed rack is not supposed to rattle and I was too excited to get out there and hit the trail in my gladiator to stop. Well guys, I found the root cause of that that rattling sound i guess i had a bolt that i missed when i was going through it was loose and it must have rattled out because i found the nut in the bed but the bolt is gone and so i'm going to go back over this one more time and make sure i check all of the bolts and i recommend if you are going to build this go ahead and buy yourself a little tube of that blue thread locker and that will help you make sure that your bolts don't rattle off i don't think the bolts are going to rattle off i think i missed this bolt but that blue thread locker will will absolutely guarantee that they won't they might come loose, but they won't rattle off completely. So the last time I came down this route, I was in my minivan and my minivan could not make it down some of these paths because the minivan was bottoming out. So I do want to go down and see if I can get to the end and see how far I can go. And there is just a little bit of snow on the ground still. Nobody's been out here since it snowed last week, but the snow is almost gone. So another consideration putting something like this on the bed is as I get more and more accessories on it, I'm probably not gonna be able to run this thing through a car wash. I'll have to do either hand wash or use the sprayer to clean this thing up. And since I live on a dirt road, it's hard to keep the thing clean because every time I clean it, the first time I go down the dirt road, I get more dirt on it. That is absolutely further than we've ever gone on this route and I'm glad we did it. The main reason I wanted to get to the end of this route is because I've looked at it on the map and it looks like there's gonna be a great place to do some overland dispersed camping out there. And so the whole point of setting up this vehicle this way is to be able to do that over the next few months. So there is a porta potty out here. I'm just gonna go check it out. I don't. I don't know why there would be one out here. There's definitely no place to service it, but let's take a peek. I mean, we've all seen the inside of a porta potty. It's actually not dirty in there, but there's definitely no way for that thing to get serviced. So whoever put that out here, you know, they put it out here because they plan to use it. Um, and maybe they'll haul it off when they're done. But honestly, I don't even think that's supposed to be out here in the forest. So I'm sure other folks like this area. They've seen this probably on the map, but it's wide open here. Plenty of places for me to set up for overland camping. And then the best part about camping here would be that first of all, it's free and not that many people will come out here. So great spot. What's that? And it looks like there's more wood. So we're at kind of the apex of a hill on this map and I do want to get to the bottom there, see what else we got out of here. But 
this place is honestly a perfect spot to do some dispersed camping. But my son here says there's more down that way and the map also says there's more that way. So let's go check it out. All right guys, what we're doing right now is I'm just walking this next uh, bit of terrain because I don't have a winch or anything and it's just the two of us out here. And it is getting just a little bit squirrely. So we're gonna check it out. And these things, you know, to a regular off-roader might look pretty simple, but I've got this little rock here right in the middle of the route. What I really wanna see is if I needed to, is there a place for me to turn around? My journey with this Jeep is just beginning. And although this is further along this trail than I've ever explored, I wanna make sure this is a fun experience for my son. And in this moment, I believe the best way to do this is to make sure we don't get lodged up on the trail, but that won't stop us from exploring further than ever on this trip. So we're at the end of this route here and that was the best spot for me to turn around. This place is tight and I don't want to go off of the approved route. So I'm turning around here and we're going to head our way back up. The only spot that I was really concerned with was where we got out and walked it a little bit ago. But I don't feel like it's going to be any problem at all when I go into four low to get up that thing. a new jeep over the next few weeks i plan to add a drawer system and then add my fridge into the bed here and so as i get closer and closer to completing my overland adventure rig then i will start camping in the jeep and if you have watched any of my previous content you essentially know that that is the content that i love the most it's getting a little dark and i wanted to talk a little bit about the limitations that this rack has now, when I first had my vision of what my Overland Camper setup was gonna look like, I envisioned one of those longer wedge shape tents that goes from the back of the bed all the way till the midpoint of the, the cab. But this rack is just a couple of inches short of flush of the cab level. And that's not necessarily an issue, but what that's led me to do now is start researching tents that will fold out from just using the back side here. And so I was hoping to get a hard shell tent that I could just pop up and pop down as necessary. Having a fold out tent will introduce another step in the process when I set up my camper. I did pick the larger size. There's also a 12 inch height, which is just a little lower of these bed racks. And the reason I picked that is I'm about to install in my next video or two the drawer system that goes under the rack and then between that drawer system and my refrigerator i'll be able to slide out and open the refrigerator using this taller rack whereas if i had picked the shorter rack i wouldn't have that extra room in there so that's why i went with this taller rack additionally i drove this vehicle back and forth to work every day this week and that rack now that i have gone through double checked all the bolts is rock solid it doesn't make any noise it doesn't rattle it doesn't crinkle any of that stuff so my number one advice to you if you are going to install a rack like this is take your time and double check all of those bolts to make sure they're you know nice and tight upon installation the spot where i had the paint defect when i opened the packaging is right here in the front i'm going to monitor that over the next few months as someone who likes to test these things and know what their limits are for me that's actually a benefit so that i can see hey a year from now six months from now how it's holding up it has been raining here all week the rust hasn't started to set in, but I imagine that when the weather dries up, I might start to see a little bit of surface rust there. That steel is at least an eighth inch thick, so it will take a long time for that to rust through. And that's another reason that I'm not concerned with that little paint scratch right there. However, if you do buy a product like this and you do have a paint issue like that, definitely talk to the manufacturer about sending you a replacement part for that rack. Now guys, I appreciate you watching. Please consider subscribing. If you want to see why I got into Jeep culture, check out this video and I'll see you on my next adventure. Well, buddy, did you have fun coming out on these trails with me? Yeah. 
Did you have fun building that bed rack with me? Yeah. Now, the real question is, do you look forward to going camping with me? Yeah.